Good afternoon. What a thrill it is to be here for the rededication of O'Shaughnessy Hall. I'm John McGreevy, I'm the Dean of the College of Arts and Letters, and O'Shaughnessy Hall and the Great Hall, right here in the center of O'Shaughnessy, is the core uh, of the College of Arts and Letters. Uh, this past summer, uh, it's been refurbished, and I hope you look around and see the beautiful uh, work on the wood, the beautiful work on the ceiling, the beautiful work on the floor here. Uh, all of that uh, is a credit to uh, the team in our office, Rob Becht, Matthew Fulcher, and Kathy Knoll. Could they just kind of wave their hand and let's give them a round of applause. And we took the time, and, and now that the provost has walked into the room, I will say we took the money, I'm sorry, but we took the money uh, to uh, refurbish O'Shaughnessy Hall because it is at the center of what we do. Uh, I read a little bit about it in preparation for today, and Father Hesburgh, who's immediately on my left, and Ignatius A. O'Shaughnessy and his wife Lillian, whose portraits gaze at us every day, were walking across the campus in 1952. Father Hesburgh was the brand new president of the University of Notre Dame. And Father Hesburgh and O'Shaughnessy were engaged in a lengthy conversation. O'Shaughnessy at one point paused and said, where is the liberal arts building? And O'Shaughnessy said, and rather Father Hesburgh replied, well, we don't have a liberal arts building. Even then, Father Hesburgh was very good at sensing the moment. <laughs> uh, and O'Shaughnessy allegedly replied, well, then we need to build one. Uh, and they designed what is O'Shaughnessy Hall, and he paid a particular attention to this room, uh, the Great Hall, and on the seven beautiful stained glass windows done by an artist from St. Paul, Minnesota, where O'Shaughnessy was from, uh, we uh, have the seven classic virtues of the liberal arts, the seven original liberal arts. Uh, but he wanted to focus on uh, the liberal arts because he said the liberal arts uh, are at the core uh, of a great university. And Father Hesburg said then, and he even said to me, and I'm not exaggerating at all, just five minutes ago, well, of course the College of Arts and Letters is at the heart of Notre Dame. So this room, this building, the work that we do together in the College of Arts and Letters from the very beginning uh, has been seen as at the core of the University of Notre Dame. Now, it gives me additional pleasure to welcome several members of the O'Shaughnessy family. Could they raise their hands? Pat and Kathleen O'Shaughnessy, Sheila O'Shaughnessy, Brendan O'Shaughnessy, if they raise their hands again, all descendants in one way or another of Ignatius A. and Lillian O'Shaughnessy are here with us 60 years after that moment. So give them a round of applause too. And one final note from me. Uh, at the dedication of O'Shaughnessy Hall, a rather remarkable thing happened. Uh, the speaker was George Kennan, and many of you know George Kennan was seen as the architect of American foreign policy after World War II. Uh, he was the so-called father of the containment strategy uh, to try and contain an aggressive Soviet Union. Uh, it was a tense time, 1952. The Korean War was about to begin. The Soviets had uh, developed an atomic bomb. Lots of tensions surrounding the Cold War. Kennan came into this very spot. Uh, and gave a rather remarkable speech about the liberal arts and humanistic learning as a bridge against dark times. I don't think our times are as dark, but in many places of the world they are quite dark right now. And we still see, I think, uh, that purpose and that value in the classic liberal arts, the tradition of writing, reading, and thinking about the great issues that animate our culture and all cultures, uh, animated not just in this room, not just with George Kennan in 1952, uh, but for in all time and in an enduring way. Now, what a great privilege it is for me uh, to now pass the microphone uh, to the former president of the University of Notre Dame from 1952 to 1987, Father Theodore Hesburgh. Thank you very much. And I can't say that I could be more delighted than anything to be here with you this afternoon. 
you have a lot of dreams when you're president of this place. And my dream was to try to make liberal arts at the center of all living, which I think it is. I, uh, I know that it also includes science in that formula, but this is a building that says to the world that we think liberal arts is at the heart of learning because liberal arts teach us how to be human in the best intellectual and moral sense. I can recall so well that we were here for a building, you know, dedication of a new science building, the Newland Science Building. The first building, new building, we had built here for about 30 years. And I happened to be with I. O. O'Shaughnessy and I said, you know, that's a beautiful building, but it really ought to be liberal arts. And he said, of course, liberal arts is at the heart of education. And he said, why don't you do something about it? I said, well, the first good reason is I'm broke. <laughs> and he said, no problem. What do you want to do? And I said, I'd like to build one of the most beautiful and still utilitarian buildings on this campus. I would love to have beautiful classrooms. I'd like to have a whole top floor dedicated to our faculty, give them a place to work and study and even dream. I would like, if I could, to have this building connected to an art gallery, a new art gallery that would really uh, give honor and beauty to this building and to this university. And lo and behold, O'Shaughnessy told me, he said, you go ahead and design that building. And when you get it designed, come to see me again. And I said, yes, sir. So we designed this building and we came to this part of it and they said, well, Everything in this building is for some utilitarian use. You've got the art gallery out here. You have the classroom buildings, which are gonna be used every day by a great majority of our students. You've got the faculty on the top floor here to give them a real center for liberal arts. They had nothing on this campus at that point, no center to really rally around. And at the end of it, I said, you know, all great works have something a little bit extravagant that goes with them. Uh, you go to St. Peter's in Rome and that tremendous facade of the Basilica tells you what this place is about. And when you come here and you walk around all of these wonderful buildings, you see that at the heart of them is this liberal arts building. And I wanted so much to have at least one thing in the building that could be dedicated to liberal arts without being utilitarian in any way. A kind of a welcome to liberal arts on this campus. And so when we fit, finished designing the building, I said, it's a great design, but it's missing one thing. And they said, what? I said, a welcome a telling of the people who come to visit this campus what's really important and what is at the heart of all learning, including science, of course, and engineering and business. There are many things taught at the law, many things taught at this university, but at the heart of all of them is really liberal arts. So, O'Shaughnessy had heard me say this a few times, and in his gruff old voice, he says, why in hell don't you build a liberal arts building? I said, I, I have the best answer for you. I said, I'm broke. We spent so much on the science building and all the other buildings on this campus. I literally don't have five cents to build a liberal arts building. And he said, well, you have it now. He said, design the best building you can, then come back to see me. I'll pay for it. So anyway, to make a long story short, we've designed the building, and when the art was here, and all of the liberal arts centers here, 
and faculty places the heart of the university, humanly speaking, at the top floor. We finally thought, at least I thought, we needed something to symbolize the beauty and yet the utilitarianism and the real impact of liberal arts on the totality of education. And we came up with this room. And I said, I don't want it cluttered. I don't want a lot of stuff around. You can have a crucifix on the wall as we do at most of our buildings. And you could have, importantly, a few pieces of art. But I said, I want it to be a kind of great hall that imitates the great halls of the castles in England, especially in Scotland and other parts of the world. And I said, the great hall will give the place character. And I have to say that it has done just that. We've kept it simple, but it does get old like everything else, including myself. So we decided to redo it all and to continue to give to this whole university something very special. And that was this hall. It reminds me of some of the great halls in England and Scotland and Wales, but it is indeed a wonderful entree to this liberal arts building, which is at the heart of our campus and our educational endeavor. So to bless this hall, I can say in a very real sense, we have the hall and, and liberal arts have really enriched this campus. And in the name of the good Lord, who is the founder and the creator of everything good and beautiful, I bless this hall. And especially I ask the beautiful Mother of God, Notre Dame, Our Lady, to give this hall her special blessing as well. And to all of you who are here, you're also going to be blessed, believe it or not, because the best thing I could do at my tottering old age, I'm coming up on 98 in May, the best thing I could do is to honor the people who make this place not just utilitarian, but beautiful, who make this place come to the very heart of learning, which is liberal arts. And somehow, to see all of that symbolized in this hall. And I am simply delighted, and I'm going to stop now. I'm simply delighted in being able to bless this place for about the fifth time. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we put in something new, I had to re-bless it. So I bless the great hall. And I ask the Lord to bless those who work here. And I ask all of us to be mindful of the beauties of liberal arts. No matter what else we do in the university, liberal arts is at the heart of learning. And I do this most basically in the name of Our Lady, because that's her place. But also, of course, as we bless everything in the name of the Trinity. So I bless this hall in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for coming to this affair and uh, enjoy this hall the way all of us have so much. I know we have added to the beauty of it. For that, I'm grateful to all those that did this. Thank you again to Rob Becht, Matthew Fulcher, Kathy Knoll, to all the faculty and staff who work in this building who are able to be here today.
to our provost, Tom Burrish, our executive vice president, John F. Graves, and to the O'Shaughnessy family for some traveling uh, to be here today. But most of all, thanks to Father Hesburgh for dedicating O'Shaughnessy Hall not just once at its founding, but apparently five times now, uh, but most especially uh, for being here today. Thank you, Father Hesburgh. The food and drink are free. Please enjoy them. Uh, we, we hope you can stay uh, and mingle. Thanks again.